Welcome to class. That doesn't. So I'm sitting on my phone trying to figure out exactly which method of setting a fence post is the best. I just got on YouTube and it looks like there's three different ways. I'm coming up with you have a wet set, you have a dry set, and now you have foam. I feel like I'm back in school and I don't know what to do. Join me and we're going to find that out here today. We have set up three different methods. We have set up a foam setting method, a dry pack method, and a wet set method. We're going to set two posts of each kind each way. So we're going to set three different ways and right behind me we're going to start that right now. We have already pre-mixed the concrete that we're going to use for our wet set. We've already filled this hole full and now we're going to fill this hole full. Since we're going to do it three times, two times per, we have six holes already dug. All holes are dug to the same depth, all holes have the same diameter. The frost is 18 inches deep. All holes are going to receive the same post. They're going to receive a 2 and 3 8 SS49 foot post. Each of these two holes have four bags of concrete per hole. The concrete that we have chosen to go with is this one right here by Satcrete. 60 pound bag, four per hole. We're going to go ahead and get these two wet set. If you want to go ahead and do it. This is my assistant, Fluffy Dragon. <laughs> it sounded good. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and backfill the dirt and we're going to let these set. There's no water in the hole whatsoever. So all we're, we're just relying on the water that's already in the soil. Okay, so we got six and a half, which would be three and a quarter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some truss rod and we're gonna use that to stabilize our post to hold it level. We're gonna use this to pre-level out our post and so we can just pour that foam in there this method, this method works really good, especially if you're core drilling or uh, routing posts into concrete and you don't have time to sit there and hold each individual one. You can do this method and it holds it for you. So the foam that we have here, we have a part A and a part B. If we mix all of that, we're going to have too much and we're going to have a big foam catastrophe here. So what we have here is we measured the height in the bucket of each and we're going to mix exactly half and half of, each wet. of part a and part b and we have a line of part a and part b on the inside of this bucket so i'm not just making up a willy-nilly mixture we're taking half of one part and half of the other part so we're going to take part a and we're going to mix it up until it lines up on that line and i have exactly half and half. So I'm going to pour the other half in this and Andrew's going to get ready with the drill. Um, as soon as this stuff starts reacting and starts looking like the foam, yeah. this is very thick and nasty. Yicky. Safety glasses, chemical resistant gloves. Here we go. It's getting bigger as we speak. <laughs> it is, it is. I guess if we need to top it off, we can mix the rest of it. So this method, oh, this method, I'm pretty sure we could get a lot better at it. It's pretty messy. All right, so out of these three methods that we did, we have the foam. I mean, it's pretty solid. I wouldn't go reefing on it by any means because that's not gonna be fair to the other two methods that we tried. But I mean, we can still see that we have a result. Ooh, that one's, yeah, I can stand on that. That's. Pretty neat. Messy, but pretty neat. And we have the dry pack. I'm really interested to see what happens here. Kind of interested. That I think is gonna stay the same. I could be 100% wrong. Maybe it'll be really, really hard. And then we have the traditional wet set. I know what happens with this, but I wanna compare this to the other two methods. So join us in seven days, and we're gonna discover together what happens. Today is March 4th. It's super wet. 
It's about three weeks past the time we set these posts, and in the meantime, what happened is we got a huge snowstorm. There's still snow. It's about 45 degrees today. There's lots of water. There's lots of frozen ground. We're going to see what impact the frozen ground had on the regular concrete and perhaps the foam, and then we're going to see what, uh, how the dry pack turned out because exactly. uh, we got a lot of water, so it, it had the best chance possible to succeed. So we're gonna dig these posts up, and the reason that we're gonna dig them up with an excavator rather than pull them is we want to actually see what the concrete looks like, what the foam looks like, and see if there was any impact. Then we'll tap on it with a hammer and we'll see if that had an impact. Then the ones that are left, the three that are left, what we're gonna do is we'll just kinda see what it takes to get that to break free. See if we can get those posts to break free by tapping them with a hammer, um, and then eventually we'll just pull them out of the ground and see if the concrete separates from the post or the foam separates from the post and find out which one's easier. Press it hard. Yeah. That was some hard. So this ground. is yeah, it's frozen. So foam, dry pack, pack, and wet set. Is there going to be any difference? Now I did notice when we did the dry pack that it seemed like all the Portland was going up to the surface. Yeah, it could be, and you know the way we're gonna know that. We're gonna break it off. Just to break it open. It's about what I would expect, honestly. So you can see, it just looks more granulated. I would not call it soft. I've seen softer concrete. I think that you can I think the way to get even worse concrete than that, if you mix it too wet, I think you could get weaker concrete than this. It was frozen to about right here. That ground was frozen. So we'll see if the bottom half comes off easier. I don't think it's gonna. There we go, I just cracked it. So I didn't notice any difference between the top and the bottom as far as how easy it broke. I noticed a hollow sound, kind of like a, it wasn't like solid, it wasn't ringing. It's not as firm, it's not as solid, and definitely not as high as PSI. Uh, I Probably if we took these down to a lab and we had them do a compression test on it, we'd probably find that the yield strength is much lower than this. So when you mix the concrete right, you get a higher yield strength. Um, it's much like driving a post in the ground. Once you get past about here, if the grade's up here, about a foot down, no matter how much that post shakes, the bottom really isn't seeing a whole lot of action. While this isn't gonna be sidewalk grade or driveway grade concrete, what it's doing is it's getting hard enough to actually bond to the post and hold the post where it needs to be. Um, ultimately, is it getting harder than the ground around it? I would have to say yes. If we drove this post uh, in ground this hard, it would be in there very, very solid. It's not like this stuff's just completely crumbling. It's not super strong, but it's definitely stronger than that ground that we put it in. The only thing you don't know is what it's gonna be like 10 or 15 years from now. This is probably gonna degrade and crumble and uh, deteriorate faster over time, but chances are you're gonna be replacing the fence before that anyhow, so. You, right. you want me to take a whack at that one? I could do that one. Here. I don't wanna have all the fun. So you notice that ringing sound? That definitely has a more solid sound, like a, a more solid sound when he's hitting it. And you can actually hear it ring through the post. Let's continue that. This is taking a little bit more work than that one. I think he cheated actually. He definitely did something. He's a cheater. Dude, come on, suck it, let's go. Have you broke any of it off yet? I got, I got this piece right here. Oh, that's it? Okay. That frozen ground really compromised that concrete. 
This video is expensive. <laughs> SD cards aren't cheap. You either need to learn to be smaller so you take up less file space or work faster. Okay, we can't have you being all big and working slow. Sorry, sorry. Oh, you got a piece! Ah. Yay! Yay, Dan! Here. Well, I catch my breath. Dry pack concrete is definitely not as hard as wet set. The frost was probably down to here. I'm going to say that it had little to no effect on the strength of this concrete. So if you're an engineer and you're thinking, well, I got to have those guys take a bunch of special measures and stuff to put that concrete in the frozen ground, please reconsider. I have never found a post that we could put into frost that has ever failed prematurely. Oh, you got a piece. That wasn't in frozen ground either. Just so you know, that piece was definitely in thawed ground. I got a piece. Yay. If you look at it, you can tell that one's uncured and one is cured. So that you can see that it's still trying to cure because it's still the dark gray. You can see the water still in it. This one over here, you can see it's actually starting to turn the standard color of a sidewalk. So it's starting to turn that more cured gray color because it was mixed wet. It was wet set. There's nothing different between the concrete from the very bottom of the post, which that's from the very bottom and the very top. They look exactly the same and they're just equally as hard. If frost had compromised that, it should have broken. It should have crumbled real easy. Should have. Okay. I am not seeing anything on the foam different from the top to the bottom either. So this foam came from our local utility service. Uh, they use it in all their utility poles. So in a lot of ground nowadays, they're just saying heck with the tamping and they're just filling the holes full of foam. So this foam is gonna be very comparable to your Sitka foam or your post lock foam. Um, but we just got it from the utility company because we needed some in a rush. So, But I don't see any evidence that the frozen ground has had any impact anywhere on this foam. Um, I'm not noticing any discoloration. I'm not noticing any soft spots, nothing. So it's going to cure in the hole. It does probably give off its own heat. I would imagine this is an excellent thermic reaction, much like concrete curing. And that's something we didn't talk about either, that concrete curing is an exothermic reaction. So there is, it does provide some of its own heat, plus the ground around it is going to give it insulation. So it's not going to get more frozen. And I think that's why you see this concrete not being compromised by the frozen ground. One of the things to think about is the utility companies now, a lot of them are going to foam filled utility, po uh, utility poles. I would consider a utility pole or a power pole much more critical than a fence post. Uh, if those things fall over or they fail, it's going to be much more, much more costly. If it's something that our utility companies have decided is okay to use, then I would say that we're safe to use it in the fence industry. And we are seeing that the, it's yielding some pretty good results. The, the one thing I do want to test is I want to test that side loading, but same thing there. You think about those utility lines and the wind's blowing, I mean, it's they've got some in there 25 feet up in the air. There's a lot of side loading on those utility posts trying to work that foam free of that pole. And if they have faith in it, I think we can safely develop some faith in it in the fence, fence industry, so. So this one, uh, this one floofed a little bit more. This one floofed a it little floofed, bit more. So we did get some good floofage. You could trim that off with the, uh, sawzall or something like that if this is if this is going to be somebody's fence so let's shake it let's shake it down here get on it well which way you want to go <sighs> can you pull it out pull it out yeah i can't do i can't yeah, pull it out it ain't. if i can't rotate it i can't pull it out we'll whack it we'll whack it whack it hit it hit it with your purse i'm getting wet we're gonna add gravity I don't see it moving. Put your blade down. You're still cheating. 
There you go. Really? There's always got to be that one kid. So if you're wondering why we chose to hit these posts with the sledgehammer, that vibration actually sends a shock wave and has the best chance of breaking that free of the surrounding material. So whether it be foam or uh, concrete, we see that a lot when we are jackhammering concrete off a of post. So if we hit the actual metal, it'll send a vibration, a shock wave through the post and it'll crack that concrete really well. So we're just trying to give these the best chance to break free of the concrete and fail. Um, so that's all this is about. I think I probably broke the top too. I, don't, I can't pull it out. We're going to need a lot of negative G's. Luckily, we have a negative G machine right here. Oh, we did get it to fail. All right, go for it. I think you're gonna have to rip it off. You might want to stand back. Here to, yep, there we go. There you have it. If we're talking about sheer bonding power, obviously the foam is the weakest, the dry pack is the second best, and the wet set concrete is the best. Uh, and we've proved that in almost every case. It took us a lot more work to get the dry pack post out of the concrete when we started pulling on it. Ended up just ripping the post out with the frozen ground. It's just not gonna come out on the wet set concrete. We couldn't get it to fail. The concrete's bound to it harder. But in a natural setting, I think it's very safe to say that any one of these is gonna hold up to nature's elements. Um, do you have any, do you disagree with that assumption? Or no, no 100%. Do you disagree with that statement? I 100% agree. The one thing I would caution people on is, is the thought that you can use one bag of concrete to do the job. I still believe that you need to have concrete from the very bottom of your hole all the way up to just within a couple inches of the top of the hole. When you're thinking about your next project, here's your options. Now you know which one may be the best, which one might not work as well for you. The foam is a lot harder to deal with because you don't have, like this, we can raise and lower our post. This again is gonna be something where you either need to set your post tall and cut it off, or you've gotta be dead on and know what you're uh, elevations need to be of each post as you set it. So until next time, you have a good dang day. Yeah, that's the top. It's a donut. <laughs> it's for if you hurt your posterior, you can put that in your chair. Well, yes. Go ahead, sit on it. Precisely. Well, I might get my seat all dirty actually, hold on. <laughs>